Well, hello. Hi, I'm Pastor Rick Williams from Zion Lutheran Church, and we are reading the Gospel of Matthew for Lent. Um, today, we are going to be looking at chapter 20. Yesterday, we uh, finished off chapter 19, where we saw Jesus teaching about divorce. We saw him uh, rebuke the disciples for trying to stop the children to uh, come see him. Remember his words, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. A reminder for us that we need to accept our faith just as little children accept faith. And then we saw Jesus tell the rich man what he needed to do to get to heaven. Even though he had kept all of his commandments and he felt that he had not broken the law in any way, he, uh, he wasn't able to give up his love of his wealth. And uh, Jesus said that was too bad. And then Jesus said, uh, it's very difficult for a rich person to get into heaven. Um, so anyway, so tonight, or today, it's, it's uh, actually my night when I'm recording this, so it's Monday night for Tuesday morning. Um, it's uh, chapter 20, so we begin. For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for denarius a day, he sent them into the vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, Go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went, going out again about the sixth hour, and the ninth he did the same. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing. He said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? And they said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received the denarius. And when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, these last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. And as Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve disciples aside, and on the way he said to them, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked him for something. And he said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Say that these Two sons of mine are to sit on your right hand and one on your left in your kingdom. Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? They said to him, We are able. And he said to them, You will drink my cup. But to sit at my right hand and at my left hand is not mine to grant. But it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. And when the ten heard it, they were indignant at the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, 
And whoever would be first among you must be your slave. As to the Son of Man, as even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. As they went out of Jericho, a great crowd followed him. And behold, there were two blind men sitting by the roadside. And when they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. The crowd rebuked them, telling them to be silent. But there he cried out all the more, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. And stopping, Jesus called to them and said, What do you want me to do for you? They said to him, Lord, let our eyes be opened. And Jesus, in pity, touched their eyes, and immediately they recovered their sight and followed him. So, interesting stuff going along. Uh, The story of the laborers in the vineyard. Um, There's a lot of different things that go along with that story. But, um, you know, one of them that's kind of interesting to consider is when it comes to our salvation, when it comes to our spot in eternity, um, some people have equated this to that. You know, some people have been Christians their entire life. They were born into the church. They were baptized into the church, confirmed in the church, grew up in the church, got married in the church, um, worked in the church, worked on committees, served on all kinds of things. And then all of a sudden somebody comes into the church who maybe is a fresh convert. Maybe they'd never even heard of Jesus before. And suddenly they become a Christian and they become a zealous Christian. They they want to partake. They want to help. They want to get involved. And sometimes those that have been there for a really long time feel that those are their positions and it's their church and it's their pew. And uh, they sometimes can hold an animosity towards the one who uh, are just coming in. Maybe they're even coming in late in life. You know, there are such things as deathbed conversions And we know that that person who confesses Jesus as their Lord and Savior through the power of the Holy Spirit, even though they may have only been a Christian for five minutes, has the same spot in heaven as those who've been Christians for their entire lives. And sometimes that causes problems with our human notion and human understanding of fairness. That's not fair. I spent my entire life working on it. He's only been a member for a month and now he's going to do what I waited 20 years to do. We can have problems like that sometimes, but that's not God's way of doing things. That's man's way. That's our way of looking at these things. So we need to kind of be careful of that. And that's, I think, partially the the warning that Jesus is, or that the, you know, well, Jesus is giving in here through the, the words of, of the master. And, uh, you know, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give this last worker as I give you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Our Lord and Savior in judgment gets to choose and to do with what belongs to him. We can't afford to be petty or worry about it. Jesus uh, just now for the third time tells the disciples what's going to happen. We're on our way to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to the chief priests and the scribes, and they'll condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. And then we see the mother's request. I think, didn't we have this request once before here? When James and John, I think they came on their own. This time they sent their mom. Mom comes up and says, Jesus, uh, I... I want my sons, one on your right, one on your left. You, you can do that for me, right? They're good boys. They've been following you a long time. Um, 
Jesus says, hey, are they able to drink the cup that I must drink? No, I don't think so. So, um, and then again, the, the ten, they hear it. Eh, they get pretty ticked that James and John, and their mother probably, uh, took it upon themselves to try and elevate them. And once again, as I think we talked about before, this is because the mother of the sons of Zebedee is thinking of Jesus in terms of a worldly ruler. Once again, they're thinking that Jesus is going to be this great Davidic king that is going to, uh, you know, rule from a, an earthly throne. And man, she wants her boys right there, one on each side, helping him rule the world. There's going to be power. There's going to be prestige. Mom would be looking pretty good at that point. But Jesus tells them, hey, you can't do it. If you want to be first, you got to be last. If you want to be served, you first have to serve. You know, what does he say? The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. And then Jesus heals a couple of blind men who recognize him as the son of David. And on that word alone, through their faith, Jesus heals them. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. That was chapter 20. Um, chapter 21 will be on Thursday. Um, chapter 21, the triumphant or triumphal entry. Chapter 21 is Palm Sunday. And guess what? We're rapidly approaching Palm Sunday. It's only a week and a half away. Uh, the 28th is Palm Sunday. So anyway, uh, if you have any questions, thoughts, comments, let me know. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope we don't get any of that snow they were talking about tonight. Looks like they're getting hit pretty hard south of us, which I hate to say is okay with me. Um, my my lawn and yard are free and clear of snow, and almost all the water is settled out already. So I think it could stay that way. The deer are certainly enjoying it. But anyway, uh, thanks for joining me today. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Be happy, be healthy, be kind. Be peaceful, be faithful, be loving, be caring, be sharing. And the biggie, be ever watchful for the return of our Savior. Again, I hope you're having a truly spectacular day. I hope to see you all again real soon. And uh, may God bless.